Hello and welcome to the module on Preceptor Pearls. This is Jane Houston again and I'm very happy to welcome you to this module. The objectives for the Preceptor Pearls module are to assist preceptors with difficult situations and to identify positive student clinical experiences. We're going to watch this video together. This is four of our experienced preceptors and regional clinical faculty and they're going to be talking about their uh, work in difficult situations and how they work with students to make clinical experiences positive. Let's watch together. Hello and welcome to the module on preceptor pearls. My name is Jane Houston and I'm the clinical director of midwifery and women's health at Frontier Nursing University and I really want to thank you for your attention today and listening to this short module on how you're going to become a more effective clinical preceptor. I'm very delighted to have uh, four of my colleagues who are going to go ahead and introduce themselves, um, the clinical faculty. Thank you. Hello, um, I'm Audra Cave. I am regional clinical faculty for North and South Carolina. I am um, in dealing with challenging clinical situations with students, I think that it's really important to identify the issue early and clearly, and then also to set clear expectations for students. I think that a lot of times we hope that things will work out or um, we want to give the student more time to develop before we address situations. And I think it's really important to just go ahead and do that early clearly and, and set expectations. Hi, I'm Anna Loizo. Um, I live in Venice, Florida, and I am clinical faculty with Frontier. And um, I do also agree with Audra. Um, I would like to add that um, when you're having difficulty with a student, that is, um, maybe they are not seeming to grasp, grasp something you're trying to teach them, that you go back and um, first try to identify exactly what the problem is. And one way you can do that um, is to break down, um, break down what, what they do with each visit into, um, like first, they do a chart review. Uh, before they go in and see the patient. So you want to make sure that they are going through the chart and finding out the, the pertinent things in the chart so they can do a thorough history. Um, so you're taking it step by step. So is that the problem? Are they not uh, finding out what they need to in that step? Uh, are they not, not taking the proper history? Um, and then just go through the physical exam um, you know, maybe they're doing all those things right, but they just are not able to verbalize a good report to you. So my advice is to first break everything down into steps and to identify exactly where the problem is coming from. And then you can better um, address it instead of just taking the whole patient visit as a whole and knowing that the student just isn't getting it. So break everything down. That's my advice. Hi, my name is Jan Weingrad Smith, and I'm clinical faculty, and I live in Norwalk in Connecticut. Um, I think there are a, a couple of real important general things that um, have helped me in as a clinical preceptor, and one of them is getting to know the program faculty who are responsible for my students' learning and um, establishing a relationship with them and also establishing rather regular contact with them. I, it's, it's really, bit, um, being in clinical practice is really busy. Um, having a student can present some um, uh, time constraints, but it's really worthwhile to call my clinical, my, uh, educational faculty occasionally and check in. The best 
programs have their educational faculties contact me. Um, and if I am approached by an educational program that doesn't offer that, I ask for it. Um, and I think it's I think that, that really is important so that I don't feel like I'm out there swimming alone <laughs> up the current. Um, the other thing that I have found from Frontier um, to back up what um, um, Audra said, I think, I'm sorry, I don't have my classes on, um, is in problem identification, we've got a terrific sheet that um, allows the student and the, and the preceptor to actually write out what they think the problems are. And before I get involved with, um, you know, calling up the, the, the educational faculty, um, I found it really helpful to go through that kind of tool because it helps put me and the student on the same page. When I take a student initially, I sit down and, and we talk about what are my objectives for their learning and what are their objectives. And so um, we set some ground rules. And then when we run into problems, um, having this kind of a tool uh, is really helpful in working through it. Um, and I think the most important thing is to identify problems early. Um, I once had a student <laughs> I once had a student who couldn't find a cervix, um, and she was almost halfway through her program. And you know, she was a lovely student. Um, she she was very nice. She was trying very hard. She couldn't find a cervix. Um, and I didn't tell the educational faculty that because I didn't want to. You know, I wanted to work with her, and I thought, oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen any day now. Well, bottom line was I had to pull back from having her manage patients and have her just examine every single patient on the labor floor when we were there until she got the cervical check and then we went back to managing patients. So, you know, those are that that's one way I handled a particular problem and I used the problem identification sheet. It was really helpful. Um, and I think that helped my student have a more positive experience because it wasn't like I just kept telling her, well, you can't do this and, and you really have to do this. But I said, to her, what do you think is preventing you from doing this? And let's work on this together. Um, and I think that she appreciated that and didn't feel like I was um, putting her down or anything, which is really kind of important. Hi everyone, I'm April Dobra, family nurse practitioner. I'm also the regional clinical faculty member for Frontier Nursing University in the Southwest region, which includes Utah, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, and Southern California. Um, today I just want to address a couple of issues with regards to assisting um, with difficult situations or potentially difficult situations with students. To me, I think the very best thing that you can do is set a foundation of clear and very consistent communication throughout the precepting process. In so doing, one of the things that I have found most helpful is to set, a say, set aside, say, five, ten minutes at the beginning of the day and at the end of each day that you're working with a student. During this time, you can address such issues as student goals, reflecting on the previous day in clinical, um, any issues that the student may have had uh, during that period of time, um, things that they'd like to accomplish that day, or future goals. And you can also address these issues at the end of the day to say, hey, let's recap. How did today go? Do you feel like you met your goals? If not, what can we do to support you in so doing this? Um, that can really set up that foundation that allows you to identify those problems early on, helps you to best support the student, sets up a good channel of communication, and really helps to ensure a good outcome and clinical experience for both the preceptor and the student. I guess one of the most important things that I had to learn over my years of precepting was that sometimes um, I'm not helpful. Sometimes I, I don't, uh, I, I step in or do things that are not helpful to the student. 
And if I don't give them a chance to tell me that, or if I'm not open and being open takes <laughs> some practice, then I get it back on an evaluation at the end, which is, you know, kind of hard. So at the end of every day, as you were suggesting, April, I sit down with a student and I, sit, and I say, so what do you think went well today? Um, mm -hmm. What do you think you need to work on? And was there, what was it about what I did with you that was uh, not helpful? And what did I do that was helpful? And how do you think I could help you better? Um, it took me many years to get to get to a point where I could say that um, because, of course, I thought I was helpful to everybody. You know, I was practicing midwife and, and of course, I knew how to teach students. But the bottom line is, some days I didn't. And um, I had to be willing to allow them to tell me that. And, and that's when I think I began to have better relationships with students. Um, and... Um, be a better preceptor for that. It, it, it did take me a long time to get there, and it was, on some days, very painful. Um, but if I wanted to help the student move forward, um, that's what I felt like I had to do. I also think it's helpful to take students back to their objectives. So in some situations that I've encountered that were challenging with the student, it would be helpful for me to come out of the room with the student and, and, and kind of quiz them on what is your differential diagnosis. Remember, this is a part of our management process and this is what we do. So sometimes I think students get so lost in the totality of being in a clinic that they may need our guidance to help bring them back to the management process. This is what you do, differential diagnosis, and if you think this is what you're looking at, then what do you do? And really just kind of taking them by the hand and, and guiding them through that process because it can be very overwhelming being in a busy clinic. Um, I think sometimes they get a little lost in that. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So that's um, some really great um, information about really planning out your day with your students. What are the objectives that we're looking for each day? Thinking about yourself again, as uh, Jan said, you know, am I an effective teacher today? And if I'm not, why am I not? And then really, as Audra said, being able to take the, the student out of that situation when they're maybe getting a bit overwhelmed and saying, you know, what are your objectives here? Let's, let's step back, as April and Anna added, um, about being able to um, really analyse what are your goals for the day and what, and at the end of the day, reviewing those goals and um, being able to um, talk about them. Uh, with uh, your student. To review, experienced preceptors take time to meet with their students. It is important to provide feedback in a private setting where the student feels valued. And clinicians can have a huge impact on their learner's ability to learn in a stressful environment. I hope you've enjoyed this module on preceptor pearls. <laughs>